at this point in the evening or in the day, feels like the evening, and at this point in the day, I tell people thank you for your time and your effort and your attention. And how amazing has this day been? I mean, this has been unlike, <laughs> unlike any other conference I think I've been at. Now, we use this, and let's give another clap for the great massages. <laughs> I know, it's fabulous. Um, we refer to designs in meetings as meeting design. That sounds really dry. I really like the term of mixing it up, because that's what Dave says he's done, and that's what we're going to do a little bit now, because when Dave first talked to me, he said, Val, how'd you like to talk as part of this conference and say a little bit? OK. Well, we're going to do it like TED Talks. OK. Well, I thought TED Talks were 10, 15 minutes at the most with no PowerPoint. So here I am in front of you all, naked. <laughs> I have no PowerPoint. <laughs> Do you realize, though, quite how intimidating that is for me? I kept seeing these great talks and great talks, and they went on and on, and I'm thinking, oh my god, what am I going to do at the end? So I'm going to do what family physicians do. I'm going to talk a little bit about a, re a person I read, and then I'm going to tell some stories that every clinician will relate to. So, Robin talked about community health. How many people here know the name Rishi Manchanda? Phew. So, there is a free book. You can pick it up. It's called The Upstream Doctors. And he talks about working with communities and, and refers to the work they do as upstreamists. So, this is where upstream comes from. Here's the first story. You're walking along with your friends. You come to a stream, a body of water, and there are children in that stream drowning. What do you do? Well, the first guy jumps in and tries to get the kids before they drown. The second person goes along and says, I got to build a raft. We got to pull these kids out. And the third person sort of, where is the third person? Well, the third person is going upstream and saying, who the heck is throwing these kids in the water? That's what he calls the upstreamists. So what do we do as family medicine? Well, I would say we do all three. When somebody is in front of us bleeding, we stop the bleeding. That's acute care. That's pulling them out before they die. And that's part of making a priority. We also build the raft. That's prevention. That's what we do also. And then what Mark Hansen was saying earlier, we have to have a fundamental change in the way we deliver care. And part of that is being upstreamists. Because of that diagram that Robin just showed you, that said that most of our health is determined by our zip code, not our genetic code. It's determined by where we live and how we live. OK, so how are we going to do this? It's certainly not healthcare now the way we have it. And I'm going to suggest to you that we will be change agents, whether we like it or not. And we will come back to that. I'm now going to tell a couple of stories. And they're even more vulnerable because they're my stories. And they're all true, and they're all things that happened to me. So it's my birthday. I grew up in a little town. No, it's not really today. No, that's part of the story. <laughs> no, no. This was, my, this was my 11th birthday. I grew up in a little town um, in eastern Ontario. I'm going to my bowling party pull my bicycle into the bowling alley lot, 
fall off, wreck my leg big time. Well, there's no other adults there. My mother's getting the birthday cake. So what happens? The man delivering the bread, Mr. Keck, of course, who we all know, and we got bread delivery in this little town. So he takes me to the doctor. So you walk in the doctor, you get fixed up, and you go back and join the bowling party. So what do we know from that? We know that it's a community. It's a village. My ideal, as I talk about where we want to be, my vision is that every patient, or as many as possible, who walk in our office, it's the somebody knows my name. It's the sense of being known in the fullness of I see you. And whether that's at the parking lot or whether that's in our office, that's the part of being part of a community. Flash forward. OK, I'm a first year medical student. We have a similar thing in Toronto that uh, we had at, have here in Medic. I'm going with my little, I've just learned to take blood pressures. And I'm going to take blood pressures in the sky rise that uh, houses elderly individuals. I had a great time taking blood pressures. And I went back to the same lady again and again. Well, it wasn't because of blood pressure, right? It was because she wanted to visit. And nobody else visited her. But it was also because I wanted to visit. That I got as much out of that visit as she did. The me and the we are so intertwined. And we need to know that. That's part of how we live our life, is to intertwine those stories. OK. Next story is I'm doing, so many of you know, before I came here, I was in eastern North Carolina. We're building a new office. We decided we would get some focus groups of our patients to talk about what sort of things they wanted in our new office. And lots of information, lots of literature about the fact that how the office is designed influences the care you give. Everything from the color to the entrance. And we've had enough new offices in this system that I think everybody here realizes that. So we're having this, these focus groups. And one focus group was specifically for individuals who were what we call working. And so they came after the working hours. We provided child care. And in large, these were, first of all, most of our population that we served in this clinic were um, on subsistence. You know, they were Medicare, or Medicaid, or self-pay. And most of them were minority. And so we're having this focus group. And all of a sudden, one person says, we need metal detectors. And all the way around the group, everybody said, yes. We have to have metal detectors because we want this place to be safe. I was totally flabbergasted. I hope it didn't show as much. It was not a concept I had thought of. I'd always assumed your doctor's office, your clinic, was safe. For these people who lived in a different world than I did, I needed to listen. Because my assumption wasn't correct. Final story. Just happened a few weeks ago. Here. Um, I had a patient who I was away. You know, haven't you always heard, Dr. Gilchrist, you're never here when I need you. So I was away. One of my very astute colleagues saw this individual, 61-year-old man, who's perfectly healthy, but had sort of an atypical abdominal pain. She, in fact, did the CT for this patient. And this patient has a big retroperitoneal mass. Biopsy positive B cell lymphoma. 
she appropriately, uh, I was just getting back, she appropriately called the patient and told him the diagnosis. I got back to town the next day, called him, said, you know, how are you doing? And he says, well, not very well, of course, but you know, one of the things was somebody I didn't even know, had just barely met, called and told me this. Again, I was flabbergasted and shocked. I thought, well, of course they'd call and tell you. But what he wanted was he wanted me to call. Because, again, it's all about the relationship. It was that continuity relationship and that sense of being known that was important to that individual. Completely surprised me again. So, what does that mean for how we practice and how we're going to practice in the future? Well, I would say that it calls upon us to recognize the self, the we of our communities, the we of our patients, and the collaboration around that. Did you need something, Sue? Oh, I'm sorry, it's right there. I oh. <laughs> That's fine. I would say that the only way that we can do this is with all our resources and all our teams and certainly everybody in this room and certainly everybody in our organization. I would say the other thing that we need to keep in mind is it's never an either or. It's always an and. It's always you and me. Me and we. It's always the things that we shouldn't split. When I first went to medical school, I was told, you know, you can be a doctor or you can be a mother. And even at that time, I thought to myself, what? I mean, <laughs> but we get caught up in that all the time. Is it personal care or is it care for the community? Well, of course it's both. Is it the doctor care or is it the team care? Well, of course it's both. We ought not to be caught up in what I call false dichotomies. It will take all of us. So, let me just read another little bit. How many of you know Parker Palmer? Well, actually, some people might know him personally because he's from here, but how many know about his writing? His courage to teach, yeah, and then his later book um, called Healing the Heart of Democracy, which is uh, amazing. There's an excerpt from him, and it talks about leadership. And I said that we were all going to be change agents, and we were all going to be leaders in the department. And our system needs us to be leaders. How we bridge the satisfaction of our patients, ourselves, and working in our communities, it's a challenge. And we can lead this. But he talks about the five habits of the heart. So Melissa, do you know this? You were the one that knew Parker Palmer. I think it's wonderful. OK. And understanding that we are all in this together. An appreciation of the value of otherness. Yes, we're in it together, and we're individuals, and work individually, and we have to listen to the individuals in our group. An ability to hold tension in life-giving ways. The tension of the and. And move that forward. A sense of personal voice and agency. Yes, it's all of us, and yes, it's me and you. And the capacity to create community. OK. So what I'm going to do now as our closing action here. Um, so Robin talked about what community was and how they're using the definition. So what I want to do is use my visualization of community, which is the 
web that sustains me. The web that sustains each other is our community. So everybody stand up. And I want you to hold hands, whomever, whomever you grab to. And there may be some holes and there may be some irregularities and it's not going to be symmetrical, but it is our web. It is our web to sustain one another and to sustain our community, be it the one that's here and now, and be it the one that we move into the wider community. Thank you all for all of your work every day and into the future. Thank you.